Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about sample space and probability. So sample space is essentially the realm of uh, possible outcomes that you have for a given situation. So let's look at this example. It says you flip a coin and roll a six-sided die. How many possible outcomes are in your sample space? And they want us to list those outcomes. So let's imagine we do a coin flip here. There are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Then we roll a die. So if you roll, a, if you flip a heads, from there, there are six possible options uh, for your die. But if you flip a tails, there's a different six options for your die. So if you count up all the possibilities, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve possible outcomes. So if you wanted to list out those outcomes, you could use the little trees we just formed. So it could be H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and the same thing for tails, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. So there are 12 possible outcomes, and those are all of the, here's a list of all the outcomes within your sample space. All right, at this point, go ahead and pause the video and give these two problems a try. So uh, find the number of outcomes and list all of the possible outcomes. All right, go ahead and check your work. So for your coin flip, if you flip a heads, you then could flip a heads or a tails. And if you flip a tails first, you then could flip a heads or a tails. So there's four possible outcomes. Um, for number two, there are 24 possible outcomes. So there's um, six if you roll if you flip double heads. There's six if you flip heads then tails. There's six if you flip tails then heads, and there's six if you uh, flip double tails. So I didn't list them all out because I didn't have a space, but you can kind of just go down uh, your trees to list them all out, like H H one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Okay, so why do we bother finding the total number of outcomes? Because you need to know the total number of outcomes to find your theoretical probability. So theoretical probability is how likely a certain event is to occur. And if you're talking about a specific event, the outcomes where they happen are called favorable outcomes. Um, so to find the theoretical probability, you take the number of favorable outcomes and you divide it by the total number of outcomes. And um, the way you write the probability of event A happening is P of A. So it looks like a function. So let's try to actually find the theoretical probability. So um, we have a student taking a quiz randomly guesses the answers to four true or false questions. What is the probability of the student guessing exactly two correct answers? So first we're going to need to find the total number of outcomes. So we're going to um, make a little chart. So this student could get none correct, one correct, two, three, or four correct. And then we need to find all the different possible ways he or she could do so. So if the student gets zero correct, there's only one way to do this, to get all four wrong. Now, if the student gets one correct, there's a few different ways you could do it. It could be the first one, right, wrong, wrong, wrong. It could be the second one. It could be the third one or the fourth one. Now, there's even more ways that the student could get um, two correct. So we could get the first two correct. Let's do first and third. first and last. Then we can do the second two correct, second and last, and oopsie, the last two. So there are six different ways that the student could answer two correctly. Um, so if the student answers three correctly, that means one wrong. So it could be the first one wrong, the second one wrong, the third or the fourth. And there's only one way the student could get four correct, and that's if all four are right. So 
Um, to find the theoretical probability, we have to find the number of favorable outcomes. So remember, favorable outcomes in this case are when they're guessing exactly two correct. So there are six favorable outcomes, and then we put that over the total number of outcomes. So if you add up all of these um, outcomes that we listed out, there are 16 of them. So that gives us a 3 over 8 probability that the student will answer exactly two correctly. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. You're flipping a coin, then rolling a six-sided die, and what is the probability if the coin is tails and the die is four? So that is your favorable outcome. All right, go ahead and check your work. So we have the outcomes listed, and there are 12. There's only one favorable outcome, that T4, so it's one out of 12 probability. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is a different way you can find the probability of something happening, and that's actually by finding the probability of something not happening. So um, that's what's called the complement. So the complement of an event is all the outcomes that are not favorable. So the way you can use this is you can do 1 minus the chance of something happening, and that's this chance of something not happening, or vice versa. And the reason that they use one, well, one is like 100% chance of something happening, or it's saying that it will happen all the time. So if you imagine that you find the chance of something not happening, so you do all the time minus not happening, and that's the chance of it actually happening. So this P sub or P of A with the line on top, this is the way you denote the complement of an event. And like I said, the complement, you don't always have to use it, but sometimes it could save you a lot of time. So let's look at a couple examples where this could save us some time. Um, so this says there are two uh, six-sided dice that are rolled, uh, which gives you 36 possible outcomes. So they tell us there's 36 possible outcomes, and they show them to the right. Find the probability of each event. So for A, they want us to find the probability that the sum is not equal to 6. Well, I look at this, and I see a lot of um, outcomes where the sum is not 6. So I think it would be easier for us to use the complement. So the complement of the sum not being 6 is when the sum is equal to 6. So if I find that probability and I subtract it from 1, I can find the probability of our favorable outcome. So let's circle all the times that the sum is equal to 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's only 5 times where our sum is 6. So we do 1 minus 5 over 36, and that gives us 31 over 36. Now you could get the same answer. You could go through and count the 31 times that the sum is not 6, but this is a case where it's much um, quicker to use the complement. So let's try part B. So here they want us to find the probability of when the sum is less than or equal to 9. So once again, I look at this and I see a lot of outcomes where the sum is less than or equal to 9. So we can use the complement, which is when the uh, the probability of when the sum is greater than 9. So I see that that's occurring here, here, and here. So I see six um, outcomes for when the sum is greater than 9. So I do 1 minus 6 over 36, which is like saying 1 minus 1 6, and that gives us a 5 out of 6 probability. So the um, complement can be used when your favorable outcome is, or well, the number of favorable outcomes is pretty large, so you can count up a smaller number rather than a larger one. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, and we're going to use the same scenario, and I want you to use the um, complement to find the probability of when the sum is greater than 8, and use the complement to find the probability of when the sum is not 2. All right, so the way you would say the, the complement for part A is when the sum is less than or equal to 8. So that occurs 26 out of 36 of the time. So if you subtract that from 1, you get 10 over 36 or 5 over 18. So in this case, it actually wasn't, didn't save us any time to use the complement, but I want to make sure you're comfortable doing so. For part B, 
using the complement actually saves us quite a bit of time because there's only one outcome where the sum is not 2. So I do 1 minus 1 36th and I get 35 over 36. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.